Hello, hello. Welcome back to A Course in Miracles. Yes. This is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. I didn't make that up. <laughs> in case you were wondering, that's from the introduction to the course. Yeah. All right. So let me launch off here today just by stressing the voluntary that I just mentioned. I want to emphasize, and if you've seen some of these videos, you'll know that I emphasize the power of decision and choice. I emphasize it greatly because it's central to all of spiritual practice. Now, what's life but spiritual practice? Really? Spirit, life, same. Yeah. Yeah, I'll leave that one at that. So the power of choice that we have is amazing. And to the extent that you see it as a burden, which people sometimes do, I invite you to look at it quite the opposite. No one can make you do anything. Is that not a beautiful thing? I can't make you practice. I can't make you commit to the workbook. I can't make you commit to an exercise regime. I can't make you commit to having fewer alcoholic drinks at night, if that's your thing, or to quit smoking. Nobody can make you do anything. We have the free will, choice, decision to go and wander off if we want to which means that we often have, but we have the choice. So having chosen something that gives us pain, that has brought us misery and anxiety and frustration, we can choose something different. We can choose. We get to, in fact, in the present moment. This is the choice that I'm always emphasizing of love or fear, of God or the ego, light or dark. We have a choice. It's a beautiful thing to have a choice because, I mean, let's face it, we're all stubborn adults, myself included, right? Who's going to do something just because somebody says you should? <laughs> How well has that ever worked out for you? All the way from your mom when you were a kid to your school teachers. I mean, who's got a rebellious streak in the crowd here? Yeah, yeah. you don't have to self-identify. I mean, just know, right? It's, it doesn't work to force people to do things. That's why I don't do that. That's why teachers don't do that. That's why Jesus doesn't do it. We have the free will. So we simply invite you to exercise it to choose love. Now, the idea that we're working on today goes hand in hand with this notion. This is lesson 324. I merely follow for I would not lead. Feel the ego tensing up right away at that idea, right? I merely follow, for I would not lead. That is another way of expressing the phrase, of myself, I can do nothing. Nothing. How well are all your manipulations and machinations, all of your subdivisions of your life working out for you? Are you constantly experiencing the peace of God and nothing else. No? Well, it's understandable. It's understandable. When we attempt to run the show ourselves, little ego selves, we don't know what's going on because we don't know what's coming down the pike in 15 minutes. So how are we to truly act 
in the present moment trying to run the show in a way that benefits the maximum number of beings all life in the past present and future we don't know this is why we're often anxious as human beings we're living in the future or the past so no wonder we're anxious because neither of those friggin exist yet we pretend that they do we have chosen to wander off and hide in the future or the past non-existent time frames that don't exist why they're not here right now there is only right now this is not just some hippie at the Oregon country fair or or woodstock or something saying that it's not just because they've smoked a couple of bowls it's true whether you smoke a bowl or you don't doesn't make any difference the present moment is all we have this is the moment in which we exercise our power of choice so what do we do we allow our inner teacher to lead the way he she it they know what's best the ego self does not we don't we don't now the ego wants us to think that we do so we make another judgment we make another judgment call, we subdivide, we categorize and break down, we split off, we condemn and damn to a fiery hell, one group of people while exalting the next. And yeah, you know how all that goes. We call it daily life, we call it society, we call it economics, we call it a number of different things. The choice is just one choice. It's God or the ego. Now, there's so much power in following Lesson 324. There's so much power in stepping aside and letting your inner teacher lead the way. I would not lead. I don't, I don't know how any of this is going to work out. So we're encouraged in the world, aren't we, to be a leader we are. We all are. In business, we're encouraged to lead, and people that are so-called leaders are exalted in business, in politics, yeah, in, in all kinds of different arenas in life. A leader is looked up to. So how do we really lead? Well, we follow, don't we? We step out of our own way and allow our inner teacher who really knows what's going on to run the show. This is not as difficult as it, as it seems at first because the ego wants you to believe that's impossible. The ego doesn't even want you to believe that there is such a thing as the Holy Spirit or God. Ego thinks it's God, pretty much. Doesn't want you to turn your entire experience over to a higher power. I mean, really, it's only the power, only God is. But the ego doesn't see it that way. Wants you to try to run around like the proverbial chicken with its head cut off, trying to do things the same way you've always done them and getting the same results, but wanting different results. Einstein's definition of insanity comes immediately to mind, doesn't it? Doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and expecting different results. How's that working out for you? <laughs> great yeah if you honestly answered that it's not then well join the club right i mean really really you're not alone in that you're never alone in any of this why there's no separation of any kind we actually can't be alone can't be so we have the choice to step out of our own way 
and allow our inner teacher, who's really a part of us, to lead the way. I mean, we have that choice. We also have the choice to run and hide. How many times have you done that? Are you doing that right now? Yeah, I've done it. I, I did it behind a, a career that I didn't like at all for 13 years, mind you. I mean, you may have done that for longer than that, even in this lifetime. So people hide from who they're really supposed to be in the world, from who they really are in a number of different ways. And they're all socially acceptable, <laughs> right? I mean, even the ones that are borderline not socially acceptable, like addiction and things that, you know, still it's so common, right? It's commonplace. We want to run and hide. So the course puts it, we can choose to wander off for a little while. But as you wander off, you're drawn again to spirituality. This is the voice, part of you, deep down. The Holy Spirit is your inner teacher, but uh, it's also part of you. There is no separation of any kind. God is. The verbal math on this is ultimately very, very important. And if it takes a while to sink in, so be it. That's okay. That's what time is for. That's what time is for. So we are in a, what appears to be a process, right, of giving up control, moment to moment choice and decision. So rather than run from the truth, rather than run from the beauty and the limitlessness and the magnificence of who you are, rather than run, from that, come home, so to speak, yeah? Come home. That's the invitation of Jesus. That's the invitation of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you follow a different guide or guides, that's their invitation to you to come back to who you are, to quit running around thinking you know best, yet dazed and confused and really anxious because we don't, we can't control this. And wouldn't it be a relief? Hmm? Wouldn't it be beautiful and a, a fantastic piece that covers your mind if you were to step aside The very well-known, the very well-known idea of myself, I can do nothing is, is very, very poignant here. And A Course in Miracles in so many words and in so many different workbook lessons, because we need to hear things at least 365 times, do we not? <laughs> More than that, if we're honest. The, the course just so poignantly in so many different ways, keep saying the same thing. We're invited to give control to one who knows, knows, not supposes or thinks this is right or hopes it's right, but it could be really wrong, but no, knows. Give control to one who knows the safe, loving, forgiving, beautiful, boundless, joyful, unifying outcome to all things without exception. Remember, we are all one, there is oneness. So in oneness, there's no exception, is there? 